All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing, which is to integrate a REST client that I wrote for Unity. And I haven't really tested this, so I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm going to try as much as I can to be able to offer the Magic Leap developers a REST client solution. So for those of you who don't know what a REST client is, it's basically a way to communicate with web services. If you want to request a resource, let's say that you have a user database and you want to request a user, normally the resource will be, you know, the user's database and then you're going to specify whether you want to get a user by ID, you want to get a user by, you know, an attribute, you might want to create a user. So REST is just a way to communicate with web services in a clean way. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a REST client that I created for another project. We're going to be integrating it into Magic Leap. And the reason why I want to do this is because I know that you're going to need it. And if you don't need it, at least you'll know what, you know, what REST is and how you can use it in your own projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be bringing in the code completely from, from my repository. So I'm going to create a new folder called scripts and that's where, looks like we already had one. So, and that's where we're going to be putting everything. And I'm going to delete everything in here because a lot of these things are from the other examples. So let me just make sure that I don't remove anything that I don't really want to remove that we might need in this example. So the only one that I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the weapon controller and we can rename that to be something else. And, and the way that I'm going to use this is I'm going to, I'm going to leave it because I want to trigger an execution. And anytime we execute a, a button, we're pressing a button on the controller, we're going to be making a, a web service call. So I'm going to just rename this and then we can repurpose this for, for what we need it. So I'm going to start with calling, we can just call this one REST client controller. And we can just do that. And then the other thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to need a component that magically provides, which is going to be the actual controller. So I'm going to drag it and drop it into content. And this is going to be the controller handler. Let me make sure that I don't have, I'm just thinking the one the magic leap had, which is the controller left. Let's see, controller left. And they don't have it in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into their examples and we're going to be pulling the one that they have. So I'm going to go to scenes and then save these scenes so we don't lose our changes. Go into controller and then I'll just copy the one that they have. And I try to save as much as much time as I can. And now that I don't know how to do it, it's just that I don't, I have, we, you know, we, we get just so many things that we need to know and we need to learn. And this is one thing that I just never remember. So I'm using a brief app. Okay. So we don't need the, we, let's see, we, we can leave the controller visualizer. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. The controller transform, we can leave that as well. The only one that I'm not going to need is the controller feedback because we're going to add our on. So I think this is great. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and let's see, make sure that this is set. So the canvas, okay, the canvas is set up at the right, at the right place. I think that's fine. And then we have our controller. So the next thing that I'm going to do, let's go back into that script and then fix the script. And let me make sure that I open it through here. I'm going to go to scripts, rest script controller. And I'm just going to remove a few things that we don't need. So we're not going to need that. We only need the connection. Let me make this bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, and then we don't need weapons because there's really not a weapon in here. Then I need to bind to this method. So we're going to use, we're going to use that. And we, we can leave this, but I'm going to change this to be a space. And every time that we hit the space key, we can make a rest client call. And I'm not needing any of those. Awesome. And then I know that we're going to need a method to make an HTTP call. So, and then this guy is also going to need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, make rest client HTTP call. And then for now, it's just not going to do anything. It's just going to say debug the log making HTTP call. And we can just keep it simple like that. The reason why I want to make it is because I want to make it, I want to call it from here. And I also want to call it from or binding to the controller, which is going to be when we hit the bumper button. Okay, so I think we're good here. And then the last thing that I want to do is I need to rename this. So I'm just going to copy this name here and then I'll use it for 
our class and I think we're good as far as this implementation so now let's go back into unity make sure we don't get any errors and if we don't have any errors I'm going to go to github and pull the other code that we're going to need okay so let's go ahead and go into github and I'm going to go into my my Dilmer v Dilmer v repositories okay and then I have the unity rest client which is the one that I want to pull and I could go ahead and I think I already have it in my computer so I don't need to I don't need to download it but for you if you need to follow along go ahead and you can either clone it by just using you know HTTPS or by using SSH or you can simply just download the whole zip file and then you can do it that way and in fact I could do it that way, that way as well that way I don't have to go to another folder and this is exactly what you'll need to do if you need to use it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into assets and then I have this REST client folder. So what I'm going to do is, let me make sure. Okay, so this has scenes as well. You can download the entire folder if you like, which includes a scene, which is going to be an example scene. And, or you can download just the scripts. I'm going to download the entire thing, and then we can, you know, we can have the whole thing in the, in the project because I'm going to be checking this into source control as well. So I want you to have exactly what you would need and what you would do if you needed to download it yourself. All right, so now we have everything that we need. We have this REST client, and I have this REST client example. So you, the, the other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need the couple of the examples that I have in here. So let's go ahead, go ahead and open it up so we can see what we're dealing with. And I know what we're dealing with, but I'm trying to make it, you know, make it in a way that I don't know, but I, <laughs> I build it so I really know how this works. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of you know, give you an overview of how how this works, and then we can go ahead and add it to our project. So the one thing to keep in mind is you're gonna need a URL, right? You're gonna need to know where we can actually make an HTTP call. So we're gonna need to find a web service on the web where that we can actually make a call. So we'll do that in just a minute. The, the other thing that I can do is with this HTTP client, so this is my implementation, it's called REST Web Client. And the way that you access it is just like this one. You can say instance, and then you can basically say either you want to do, you know, you want to do an HTTP delete, get, post, and put. And I'm gonna be adding more methods because there's al also a patch, there's also a head, there's also there's many other ones that I I don't use as frequently, but you you might need them. So this is how it works. You basically tell it, okay, I want to do a get, meaning that you want to get some information from a web service and then you tell it what endpoint you want to get. In this one, I was basically using one of the local REST, REST endpoints that I created with a web service that I did locally, but this will basically be replaced with the endpoint, the resource that you're trying to access. And then the way that it works is up, upon success or, or failure, this is going to basically give us a response and then we have a callback that we call to find out what happened. So it's fairly simple and then here's another example when where we're requesting a header because we're we're dealing with HTTP with application.json, so with JSON format, so we need to put a header in, and you can see an example here that I did on when I'm converting this to JSON because I'm basically sending a player, and then here's our callback, and then here is one of the headers that we need. So I also have another example that I that I did. I believe I kept it, or if I didn't keep it, I might need to add it. Where you can also pass in. If you wanted to pass in a client ID, let's say that the, you know, the web service was secure, you can also do that with this kind of format. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is we need to find uh, basically a test endpoint that we can test with this. And I believe there is one that I was testing with. Let's see, HTTP test endpoint. I think I found one by, by looking on the web. Make sure and see if I can find one quickly here. HTTP test endpoint. And nope. Let's see, res web service test endpoint. Of course I'm not gonna find it that I'm now that I'm now trying to walk you through. And I think I think this was the no, this wasn't the one that I was looking for. Oh, okay, so here's the one that I was looking for. So it's called res test test.com. And in here they have a little HTTP bin that we can use to, to make a HTTP call. That's the one that we're gonna use. So you just call a get and 
basically gives you a list of Im some information about your browser. And I think that's that's our browser. And then, because it says, let's see, it says Macintosh, Mozilla. Yeah, so it's just basically give us, giving us some of the agent information. So we're gonna use that for testing. All right, so now that I have this, I'm going to show you how we can how we can utilize it in our own implementation. So all we really all we really need is going to be this line here, and then we are going to add some additional things. But so if we go into our REST client controller, so one of the things that I'm going to need to provide is we're going to need a URL, and I could do something like base URL, or we can simply just type in the URL completely. We can just say URL. I think that's that's okay. And then I'm just going to leave that with an empty string, and then we're going to make this serializable. Awesome. And then here in our in our make rest client HTTP call, I'm going to copy and paste what we did. And obviously, I need to be bringing in my, my namespace, which is rest client.core. And that way, we can access the, the implementation that I have. And then the other thing that we're going to need is just a URL. So I'm just going to replace that with this. We can simply, instead of doing interpolation there, we can just simply just put the variable. And then this is going to be the callback. We don't have the callback here. And if you hover over here, this is this is a response. So what I'm going to do here is instead of doing it on the other class, we're going to do something like this. And if you notice, this is also void. So we're going to say void. And then it also takes a parameter, which is going to be the response that we're getting. And I'm going to be bringing in the models that I have on the on the core, and then this is going to give us a response object, and then we can just go ahead and copy what I have in here so that we know what's happening. Awesome. Then I think that's everything that we need to do to do an HTTP an HTTP GET call. So that's going to happen either if I do it through here or if I do it through here. So before I keep going, I want to test it. So. To test that we're going to need to go into our, the inspector. We also need to add the script that we just created. So I'm going to go into the controller here, and I'm going to call REST client controller. And then I'm going to need a URL. So let's go ahead and find that URL that I have here. Go back into Unity, paste it in here. This is going to be the URL that we're trying to access. And, and I think that's everything that we need. So let's go ahead and hit play so we can play the scene. And then you're going to get errors about Magic Leap. I think that's fine. It's because I'm running in here. And then, but you can see that I hit a space and I'm getting a 200. I'm also getting data back. And let's see. Yeah, I'm getting everything. I'm getting the arguments. I'm getting the headers. The So we're successfully making an HTTP call. So the next thing that I want to do is it's that's cool and, and everything, but I want to see it on the canvas. So let's go ahead and make a change here to the script. I'm going to be adding another parameter. And then let me check and see what we have in the canvas. We have a title, a title, and we have instructions, and we have the logo. So we don't really no, we do we do need instructions. I was gonna say we don't really need instructions, but I want to give you instructions so that you know what it needs to, this needs to, what you need to do on the controller in order to call it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this up, and this is gonna be Magic Leap. We can just call this one, or we can just say REST client. If I can type, okay, let's see, res client example. Awesome, in the instructions, we're gonna say hit the bumper button to execute a res client, a res HTTP call. You can just say res client HTTP call. So that's going to be the instructions, which are fairly, fairly small. So I think that should give us what we need. And then the other thing that I'm going to need is let's actually make this also a smaller. So I'm going to make it, let's go ahead and make it right about, right about there. And then we can just change the anchors to be on the bottom right. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to show you all the data that we're getting back from the HTTP call. So I'm going to remove this, and this is going to be our data, which is going to be, in this case, going to be JSON. And we're going to be making, let's make this much bigger. And I like when things are aligned. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to align it right about there so we can see the data. And then I'm also going to make this much smaller. Then let's see what else. I think, that, I think that's going to work. And then we can just left align it. So we can just say response 
data that's where our response data is gonna go and then yeah I think that I think that's perfect okay excellent so the the other thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need to bind this to the to the controller so I'm just gonna say this is gonna be our response data and then if we go back here let me make sure that I create a let me look at this this is gonna be because I was using on the other example that I did I was using text mesh pro in this one I'm just using a text Okay, it gets confusing when, when I'm doing so many tutorials. But okay, so we have our text and that's not a real that's not a text that I want. I want the text from from Unity UI. Let me see if it Okay, so now it's now it's telling us. Let's go ahead and bring it in manually. Sometimes VS code is not as helpful. And let's see UI, there we go. And then this is gonna be our text UI. Okay. So it's gonna be a response data text. Awesome. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to also append the data that we're getting back. And I don't know that I need to append it, I can just overwrite it. But every time I overwrite it, I want to print the day and time. So let me go ahead and bring in day and time. Awesome. And then we can just say day and time now. And not compare. And just do now and then just do to short, let's just do the whole thing to string, to a string, awesome, and then I'll just go ahead and append it here, and then we'll also add the data, awesome, and then just paste it there, and then data equal that, perfect, and that's really everything that we need, so if we go here and we hit play, we can now hit space and I haven't bound the UI element so I'm just gonna do that really quick here it looks like I didn't make it serializable so we need to make it serializable let's copy that paste it perfect let's go back and I need to bind it to the, the script and then it's gonna hit play and if I hit space, you can see now that we're making calls successfully. And I think that should be good. So I'm going to keep it and leave it at this, but this should work on the device. The last thing that I want to make, I want to show you before I, I call it good, you need to make sure that you enable one of the, let me go into plugin, one of the privileges that you're going to need is going to be the internet. Otherwise, this is not going to work on the Magic Leap device because this needs access to the internet. And then other than that, you should be able to run this on the magically device. So that's everything I wanted to show you guys. Thank you.